Now, I know Aang comes from a fictional world and isn't specifically stated to be Asian, but isn't it a coincidence that I get him and these guys in the same week? T-Man 978, Chill Review. Hello everyone, T-Man 978. Right now I'm going to review all of the figures from the MCU Shang-Chi movie. And I heard the people from Hasbro calling him Shang-Chi. But everybody I have ever heard says Shang-Chi. So, I guess we'll be getting school when they all say Shang-Chi in the movie. Yes, I do have the other two to make Mr. Hyde the builder figure of this wave, but they have nothing to do with nothing. I appreciate Hasbro for being able to put characters out that they know people want. So yeah, I appreciate that. So well, naturally we have Shang-Chi himself. Wen Wu. I'm thinking that's pronounced Xiling. A Duff Dealer and Target exclusive, not really part of the Build a Figure Wave. Katie. I'll, at least I hope that's pronounced Katie. Why does she have on sunglasses? <laughs> My friend Parts Former's wife is named Katie and she happens to be Asian as well. So she, he showed her the picture of that and she said it doesn't look like her and she hated it when people spell Katie like that. So I was like, you know what? Just throw some sunglasses on her. That'll work. All right, here they all are out of packaging. And I'm not sure what the actors look like because I'm not super duper familiar with everybody here. But um, they all at least look like real people. So that that's good. These faces are awesome. But as you can see, the Death Dealer is the tallest. And yeah, after that is Wen Wu. And to put another character in here, that you probably have or a body type you'll have that's how tall spider-man is next to you let me move her completely right there so if you've been collecting marvel legends for a while you probably have at least one of that body type right there now it was brought to my attention that death dealer underneath of this right here and the arms are new this covering right here is new and of course the head is new but underneath of that down is apparently Ant-Man's body. Now for me, it doesn't bother me at all to be honest. But that is a piece of trivia right there. Like not including Katie because she's not officially part of the wave. They made her separate and charged an extra $3 because she comes with a lot of stuff. But we got three new molds and then a retool right there. Typically with these movie waves, you'll get like, they only do two or three movie molds. So I'm shocked they put the extra effort into to doing that. I don't pretend at all to understand the budgeting constraints or what they have to deal with to, to get these out there. But I think that is definitely good enough. The only other full movie wave we got was the second Black Panther wave. And that was all reuse really like all oh, there was not one completely brand new mold in that wave but let's start things off with the accessories katie comes with this creature thingy that has bird wings no visible face or head six legs yada 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 it looks like what are those things those little micro they, I forgot what they're called. Hold on. A tardigrade. And I've just noticed the paint underneath of here. Wow. I am yeah, literally just noticing that. So that is cool and weird. That, uh, But I guess it's movie actor and it does have paint back there. So they put a lot of paint. It looks like a fairy giant tardigrade. But I hope this is actually scale accurate right there because it is little so outside of that she does come with these two fists she has gripping hands for holding her bow she has this quiver which is painted like the straps and that right there the bow does 
fit in there like that. So here's a bunch of arrows. Paint it on tip and the top and a separate arrow so it can hold. And there is a space here so that you can jam all of this this in there right there. So yeah. Shang-Chi, Shang-Chi, whichever one is accurate. I'm going to be calling him Shang-Chi for the rest of this. But he comes with these hands right here. I don't know if he's supposed to be holding anything or whether this is accurate to one of his moves. He has two gripping hands. And you see the martial arts gesture hand right there. And he has this staff right here. Very long. About as tall as him. Zai Ling, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. She has the two fists. She has these two hands right here. Two, well, one gripping hand right here. And these two hands right here, which also are look like some type of gripping hand or um, some type of martial arts gesture right there. So I guess we'll learn more when we watch the movie. And she has this scorpion spear type rope right there. But it doesn't unravel, so it's just basically like an accessory to wrap around her, her body, I guess. When Wu, you can see as on the fist, he has these two martial arts gesture hands. And mostly, I, th I think their complexions are similar. Well, at least Shang-Chi and, and Wen Wu. So you can interchange the hands if you want. Then he has two gripping hands, so you can hold this little hook knife right here. He only came with one. Hopefully that's movie accurate. It would have been nice if he had two. Death Dealer has the least amount of accessories, but he has this hand right here holding this kunai. And then he has this kunai throwing hand right there. So that's a cool effect. But looking at the way this hand is shaped, that's what's making me think, like what if they were supposed to have some weapons like this, but then they just scrapped that at the last minute. But we'll see when the movie comes out or maybe somebody reads the comics and that's one of his signature moves and I'm looking dumb. Let's start things off with Shang-Chi. And I really, I like him. I like the way he looks. I definitely, one of the things that really catch my eye is the sneakers i love that white sole around the black sneakers and i'm not sure if he's ever worn an outfit like this i'm pretty sure he probably didn't i've seen him in a completely red red bodysuit with black details in there and mostly he's walking around with his chest out but i like this outfit naturally with this being an mcu figure he has a ton of extra details in there. You can see the stitch work and all the other types of like technical detail right there. They did give him every single figure except Death Dealer has pinless joints and a knees. But I, I feel like this is a wave that was held back. Like they designed these a while ago, like produced them a while ago. And then they held it back because the movie was supposed to come out a while ago. So if they would have made these more recently, they probably all would have had seamless elbows or pinless elbows. But that's not the case here. But let's let you see how these bend. There we go. He has the feet. His feet goes back that far. Well, they go all the way back. They come forward a bit and he has angle pivot, of course. Thigh rotation. The legs can go out that far which is a very good they can kick forward kick back a bit waist rotation which breaks up the sculpt the ab crunch is <laughs> ridiculously crazy it goes back that much and comes forward a lot like a good deal and i'm happy about that but they gave him the neck the double ball post neck that goes forward he can look up. He can look up good still. And tilt left and right. But I really prefer the hinge. But in this guy's case. He does look up a good amount. So I can't complain about that. 
no butterfly joint, but you get the typical arms that go out to there, rotate, they can crunch in that much, that's good, swivel, bicep, I mean, double jointed elbows, and of course, all the hands he has does that and rotate. And if you switch his hand, he can be perplexed about that smell on his fingers. Like, what? What is that? Oh, one more thing I wanted to show was they didn't paint the bottom of the feet. So, that's realistic. I like it. Xiling, and I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Here she is. Like I said, pinless joints in the knees. One unfortunate thing... I, I, I hate to keep bringing this back, but I have like mold flash right there. I mean, I could take that off, but just wanted to mention that. I, I rarely see that on Marvel Legends, so that caught me caught me by surprise. But here she is holding that rope spear. I guess you can do it like that, or maybe wrap it completely over her head. Possibly, maybe. I don't know how good or accurate that would look but why I say that is because it would be hanging weirdly like that instead of down but I guess you could force the mold or sculpt to be like that same technical details in the outfit they never have plain plain suits in the MCU or anything nowadays because every superhero type show is taken out their other superhero shows they don't want stuff to look super duper plain. Here are her feet. If I can even get the light on that because they're so dark. The bottom. I hope y'all are looking at the faces while I'm moving these things around. They are really good. Like I said, Shang-Chi especially. I really like his face. It just looks like a real guy. But same type of neck. She can look a good deal before it wants to fight back down a bit so you can look down of course tilt and rotate shoulders go out above 90 rotate crunch in that much rotation at the elbow more than 90 degree bend at the wrist all the wrist hinge like that and rotate the upper torso so you get that which is a lot right there back a lot forward not so much i wish they would make forward a priority on females legs kick out that much kick forward that much kick back only a tiny bit swivel double hinge knees that go all the way in so you can almost kick her back and of course you get feet that go all the way back that's Typically never a problem, problem with Marvel Legends. They can come forward a lot and she gets ankle pivot. Only thing that I wish they start incorporating into every figure that they don't incorporate besides double elbows for females is some type of swivel right here or at least ankle swivel on each figure. That would take them to the next level. But I showed you the hand. She still has this weird gesture hand and... Two of these and a fist. And that grippy hand for this. Katie! They put a lot of effort into her and she had some good things, but it's probably the most hindered and frustrating figure out of the wave. And I'm probably not going to be doing anything to help the sales of this. But yeah. Main problem, this freaking face. I mean, it looks good. Looks like a real person, like I said. But the dead and lifeless face I hated. I hate that. It just looks like she just woke up and just got some bad news or just has something on her mind. But as with all the other figures, she has a ton of detail in her outfit. Like all over. Even this paint painted detail right there. I know that took a lot of work and effort to get that on to her robe and whatnot. And down here. And getting this situated is 
very highly awkward with this hair. I mean, it it's only works from certain angles, as you can imagine. But yeah, they put a lot of effort into this figure. Besides the accessories, like this whole tardigrade monster thing. I'm pretty sure that I could see where all the money went. Like, instead of this being all one piece, they had to give her like a separate piece for the wrist. She has separate pieces for the ankles that swivel. And this is what I'm saying. If you can't get boot swivel, it would be nice if they have separate parts. Make it swivel instead of fixing them in place. I hate when they do that for figures. But let's remove this and get into the articulation. The head is on the same double ball post. It's pretty much all the rest of them except Death Dealer. Look down. Can't look up much. Shoulders go up above 90, rotate. They're in almost completely right there. Swivel at the elbow. Only a hair, well, about as much as Xiling. All the wrists do this and swivel. I can't tell if this, no, it, it can. I can see that it's, I can see the dried up glue right there, to be honest. The waist is on a double ball post. So she can do all stuff like this if you want. Mm -hmm. Do that, that, come forward, go back a ton. And under here, she is a fully articulated figure. But all of that is covered. In fact, I haven't even looked all the way up there. But she has the thigh rotation. They did give her pinless knees. Even though you'll never freaking see her knees. She can only get that leg out. The ankles rotate, like I said. They come forward a lot. Go back a ton. She does have a peg hole under there. And, of course, she has ankle pivot. But, um... Yeah, crazy hindered by everything down here. I mean, it is, and this is not a very soft material at all. Let me see if I can pop her waist apart. Yeah, I was able to pop her waist apart. Now, I guess if you wanted to modify this and kind of affix it into place right there, like maybe cut a section off and make it smaller so it can just sit right about here. She could have still about the same. You know, I said it was a double ball post, but it's just a post going up into her, uh, her upper torso. But, so you can see, she does have all the same type of articulation you would want in a figure. But that skirt ain't helping nothing. And they even sculpted her butt and whatnot. I thought it was going to be flatter than that. Once up, you see how tight that the skirt is actually fitting on it, but it's not. So, without that skirt and with this crunched in, like she could be a good fighter or whatever. Or maybe you could do something to modify this, give her two splits instead of just that one. There's a seam line going that way. That's actually just decoration. That's not even a real seam. So that is very good attention to detail right there. Much like every $20 action figure ever that comes with a bow and a separate arrow, it is difficult as hell to get this pose right here. But one cool thing I like about the way they sculpted the hands. Let me try to zoom in on it. The index finger and the pinky finger on both hands are cut out. They're individual, so that helps a bit, but the way the fingers wrap around the gripping part of the bow, it does not want to hold that really tight. You see the fingers aren't really wrapping around there, and yeah, it's mostly like they don't expect you to ever pull on this. They want you to just pose like that. But it would be nice if that could pull all the way back to be in a natural holding position. But unfortunately, you ain't going to get that. Just like Katie, this guy is hindered as well, but not as hindered. But yeah, this thing has an issue with tight, tight joints. But look at this. 
This is crazy detail right here. Crazy detail when you really think about this. This isn't like... I'm, this has to be some type of printed on technology they use down here. So that is awesome. They paint it around his boot right there. Which do look cool. Of course they paint it all up in there in that armor. They had to paint each individual ring right here. And there's the face while we're here. I know you're supposed to be Shang-Chi's dad. He doesn't look that old, but much like black don't crack. Asian people have the same same thing to a certain extent. But yeah. This is sort of like a separate pliable piece wrapped on there, but it is attached at the top. And the joints, bruh, the joints on his knees, they do. They almost do not want to bend, especially this bottom one. And they are pinless, as you can see. Let me. It is very difficult to get them to bend, but they do bend. So you can get into your, your poses, but just know you are extremely hindered by this piece right here. It is pliable, but not that pliable. And me just doing that, I can see it tearing here and there so that's his widest stance right there he has the swivel you can kick forward all the way on that leg and all the way on this leg as well you saw what i was doing with the knees that is a workout the foot kicks up a ton kicks back all the way and you get ankle pivot he has a ball at the top so it's like a ball post Shoulders go out. Mm, this one isn't going out 90, but you can rotate. And yeah, that's what we're working with there. Even the elbows, the elbow joint right here is tight. But if you do it, you can get it all the way in. The head is on a double ball post. You can look up a lot. Look down, pivot, and whatnot, and get all of that action. You saw this and the fist. I'm not a super fan of the wrist that hinge down like this, but maybe for these gripping hands, he probably should have had that. So you can like get this down. I can get him into the pose I was trying to get him into with the arm like this and having it like lean forward without rocking the, the arm actually forward. But, yeah. Gripping hand, this hand, and fist. And he does come with this blade, which I already showed off. Death Dealer is still hindered in areas, but not so much in the legs. I'm able to work around that. This can actually bend out of the way, but using that ab crunch, that's a different story. But, let's let you see these details. Nicely painted. Got these kunai you can't remove. I believe this is permanently glued. They didn't do it in such a way where you can pop that off. They took the G.I. Joe classified approach. Or maybe you can. <sighs> nah, that looks that looks sealed, so I'm not gonna do that. But you can see his body is silver under there. I don't know. I don't know what it looks like in the movie. I think they should have made it black or this color right there. I don't know why they went with that. And this, this face, I hope y'all don't hear the wind in this video. But this face, even in the, the trailer, it looks really interesting. It's like, it's weird how the eyes, you would think the eyes would disappear in all this white. But it just looks so creepy and realistic. And that even looked creepy to me in the in the trailer but his neck probably has the most range because it's on a hinge he can even like rock forward and back and stuff and look all the way down so that's why I like hinges more than 
double ball post. His shoulders go up above 90. Crunch in that much. Swivel here. The joints are a little bit stiff on this one as well. But you can crunch the elbows in that much. All the hands go in and out like that. You do have a rotation in the waist under here. And he does technically have an ab crunch. <laughs> it's in there. He can go back. Coming forward. This thing is way too stiff. Watch my death, my um, McFarlane Toys Death Sister show review. So you can see they put like a super duper pliable material on, on her body that will move out better than this is doing right now. And I didn't really look at the red inside right here. So they did put some effort into this. Now, yeah, I guess this is red paint versus the blue. So, wow. I wonder if it's red all the way up. Uh, no, I doubt it. Now, up here, it seems to be pliable, but hmm, whatever. They did put this detail on the back of the leg. And you can see the detail in the stitching in the pants. The ankles go back. Ankles come forward ankle pivot and there seems to be like a clicking in the ankle pivot it feels like I'm about to rip the peg off but I don't know why they did that it makes it difficult to articulate the ankle pivot which I'm not used to that thigh swivel knees bend that much and y'all saw me kicking him around and whatnot legs can only go back but so much and you see these hands. And I already showed like the gesture hand right there. Both of them look like that. All right, final thoughts. If you're a mitten box collector, you saw what they look like the first minute in. They look awesome. That's all you need to know. They're good to go. If you are a open them up, put them on the shelf with the other people and don't really pose them type person, these are awesome. They're all highly detailed and they look very nice. If you are a dynamic poser, Shang-Chi is the best one out of here. I can't really complain about him. He comes with three sets of hands. He comes with a weapon. Only thing else they could have added is a different facial expression, but he is very dynamically poseable. And I barely have anything to complain about with him. Xiling, if that's how you pronounce it, she is pretty much the same way. Her weapon accessory isn't too exciting. <laughs> you can't really do anything with it besides just put it on her. And that's about that. So that's boring. So same thing I said about Shang-Chi. Comes with three sets of hands. Actually three sets of hands plus an extra gripping hand for whatever you might want her to do with someone else's weapon. So... Outside of the ab crunch being weak, she's good to go as well. Wenwu, I can almost say the same thing about him as Xiling, but he is very hindered at the waist, and those knee joints are extremely tight and frustrating. So, if it wasn't for that stuff, his little waist robe, he would have way more posability, but that's there. So that is frustrating. Death Dealer. Death Dealer is good, but he is hindered in the waist. So his waist is out. So I would definitely be saying the same thing. Like I said about when Wu as far as Xiling. They would be on the same level, but his waist is extremely hindered. His accessories that he comes with are cool, but he also has no fist. And I don't know if you can get around not being able to pose the waist like that without extreme, extreme effort, because this is pliable. So if you want to put all that effort in there to get him to be some kind of posable, you can go for it. But it, it is frustrating and I don't have time for all that. Katie. Katie is almost completely dead from the waist down. You can get her in these, like I said, just take them out of the box, stand her there, poses, and you're good to go. But as far as anything dynamic, yeah, good 
luck with that. She does come with the fist if you want to have her like just standing there kind of fighting. But that dead face, like all the rest of these face, faces have at least some type of expression. But hers just looks like, oh, just scan my face and get this mess over with so I can get out of here. <laughs> that's that's how I feel about that face. And using her accessories is kind of frustrating and the hair gets in the way of the quiver. She is uh, the least fun out of out of all of these. I mean, you could take that bottom of her robe off and have the legs exposed, make her more dynamic, but then she still has that dead face. And it'll look kind of weird a little bit with her having a robe at the top and the regular legs at the bottom. Unless you don't really care about that. Maybe all that detail stops at the belt, which you still would have to adjust in some type of way. You have to at least glue it in the front for it to look somewhat decent. So, yeah, she's probably the weakest out of these movie figures. But anyhow, I ordered these from Hasbro Pulse with the exception of the Target exclusive. Katie, who is probably most definitely orderable on Target.com right now. And I believe all of these are on Amazon. I should have links in the description on Amazon to where you can find them. Or at least one, my main Marvel Legends link where you can find them and other figures in that main Marvel Legends link. Thank you for watching this. Until next time, T-Man 970, out of here. Click, click the videos. Click the videos baby click click the videos you should really click these videos click click the videos click those in videos baby click click the videos you really should click those videos click that shit go ahead and click that shit if you did you would like it Freaking gone.